Welcome to Scottish Summit 2021 and this session which is entitled A Voyage of Discovery. We're all learning together. The session will attempt to provide encouragement and guidance to attendees of all levels of experience on the resources available for learning across Dynamics and the Power Platform. It will help attendees understand what resources are available, where to find them and who might be available to provide support. The session will include insights from community members who've recently undertaken their own learning journeys and it will provide practical guidance for new and existing learners. Before I begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, without whom none of this would be possible. They are Script Runner, DQ Global, Proximo3, Redspire, Agilisys and Hitachi Solutions. Hello and welcome to my session on learning for Dynamics and the Power Platform. My name is Cheryl Netley and I've been working as a Dynamics 365 and Power Platform consultant with a Microsoft partner called Tiski for the past two years. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I've recently passed my Solutions Architect certification, but I've not always worked on Dynamics and the Power Platform. In fact, it's only quite recently that I've switched track, proving that it's never too late to try and to succeed at something new. Before I step into my presentation, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I came to be here and why I think this session might help you. In October of 2018, I lost my job for the second time in two years. And as someone who'd spent quite a long time developing what I consider to be a successful career, I didn't really understand how to deal with that. In fact, I felt a bit lost and a bit set adrift. However, as I was still funding one of my children through university and had another one still at school, languishing in the doldrums was not really an option. I had a family to provide for, so... I had to find a job, and fast. My dilemma was, should I stay in my lane and hope that I didn't find myself in this position again, or should I try a different route? Being the sort of person who tends to view challenges as opportunities, as you've probably guessed, I took a leap of faith into the less charted waters, and I'm here today to provide guidance and reassurance to anyone else who's thinking of doing the same. I firmly believe that it's never too late and we rise by lifting others. By an incredible stroke of luck, just as I started out on my own voyage of discovery, I happened upon the Dynamics community. I was scanning through LinkedIn one day when I saw a post by a guy called Julian Sharp advertising a study group for something called Azure Fundamentals. And thinking that sounded exactly like something I should know about, I registered immediately. To tell the truth, <laughs> once my initial excitement had worn off, the idea of studying alongside a bunch of what I assumed would be much smarter, much more tech-savvy people than myself was a little bit daunting. But I needn't have worried. It was a fantastic experience. The group was full of people from all sorts of backgrounds, with different job roles, different levels of expertise and experience, all of whom were completely down to earth and totally welcoming. It was an incredible first introduction to the community, Right from the start, it was very clear that no matter what any of us had done or known before, every single one of us was there for the same purpose. We were all learning together. From there, and as a consequence of the friendships that I made on that group, I've gone on to take part in many other community-led events, such as the one that we're all at today, where everyone takes turns in showing each other the ropes and where the whole crew is pulling together. So if like me, you're considering a change of direction, how do you know which direction you should go in? 
Well, most of us don't have anything like Jack Sparrow's compass to guide us towards our heart's desires. And at different times in our lives, we all have different priorities. Sometimes we're looking for a job that we love or a career that helps us to provide value in the world. Maybe sometimes it's just about earning enough to stay afloat. And if you're anything like me, all three of those will be equally important. Something that has always helped me focus is to start with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey recommends in his book entitled The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Just visualise finally reaching that treasure chest of success. What does it hold? Well, once you've decided what your success will look like, you just need to know how to get there. And although everyone's route may look like slightly different, this is definitely something that the Dynamics and Power Platform community can help you to map out. There may be a number of steps you need to take in order to get where you want to be, and this is likely to involve some learning of some form. Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft, encourages us to be learn-it-alls rather than know-it-alls and to foster a growth mindset. And this approach is certainly an advantage when working in Dynamics and the Power Platform, as the products are constantly evolving. There are two waves of releases per year, and each one is typically crammed full of hundreds of new features. On the left hand side here, we can see the steps that most people might expect to take to improve their career prospects and maybe move closer to their own personal idea of success. And on the right hand side are some of the areas where the dynamics in the Power Platform community really comes into its own. So starting on the left, Self-study. It's a great option when funds are limited or maybe when you have a lot of other time pressures and have, have to fit your studying around them. For example, if you have a young family or if you're working shift patterns and that dictates your available study time. Microsoft Learn is the key resource for all self-study and we're going to take a look at that in just a moment. But there's also a vast amount of online content to accompany and to augment the learn material, which is by and large produced by the community. And this can give context to the information in Microsoft Learn and help us to understand real world use cases. There are a lot of companies providing formal training and these are referred to as learning partners. And you can find a list of these on Microsoft Learn. Formal training can be a, a quick way to learn something if you can spare the free time and if you have the budget. Certifications are available across the whole Microsoft stack and they can give assurance of a particular level of understanding. And studying for certifications is a great way to refresh knowledge. On the right hand side, we start with mentoring. I've been really lucky to have some great mentors throughout my career and I can't recommend mentoring enough. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on mentoring shortly, but it's particularly good for anyone interested in developing personal skills. Although more technically specific mentoring is available. I've already mentioned study groups and it's no secret I'm a huge fan. I'm going to provide a little bit more information on how you can get involved in study groups a bit later in the session. Helping others is really why we're all here and it's what the community is all about. In the words of Phil Collins, in learning you will teach and in teaching you will learn. I'm going to provide a very short demo into Microsoft Learn now for anyone who is not yet familiar with the platform. When you first get started with Microsoft Learn, I'd recommend that you create yourself a learning profile. A learning profile will help you keep track of what learning you've done and will help you to organise what further learning you'd like to do. You can create bookmarks and collections and you can also participate in challenges that Microsoft issue occasionally at events such as Inspire or Ignite, where you can complete a challenge to gain a free exam voucher or, or some similar thing. 
Your profile, as I've mentioned, will allow you to measure your recent activity, set up bookmarks, and also will track any achievements that you've managed to gain. Uh, additionally, <laughs> you can get badges, trophies, and an, an amount of XP. I've never really kept track of my badges or trophies, but I do like to see my XP going up as I'm learning. When you set up your learning profile, I would recommend that you use your personal email address so that if you do happen to move organisations, you can take your Microsoft learning profile with you. The material on Microsoft Learn comes in a number of formats. It, there is a lot of text and there is some video. Additionally, Microsoft provide a means to check your knowledge as you're going along. Material is grouped into modules, which is then grouped into learning paths. And a learning path will take you through all of the modules that you need to know to be successful in a particular exam or certification. On the Learn, on the Learn website, it's grouped into products, into roles, so that you can see what learning you need to do to be successful in a particular role, or into certifications as well as the learning material that's on here. Microsoft also provides Learn TV, where they present useful webinars every so often. So I'm just going to go in now and search for a particular certification that I'm interested in gaining. So I'm going to browse certifications and I'm going to add in the code of PL100, which is the code for the Power Platform App Maker certification. And as we can see, when I enter that code, two things pop up on the website here. One is an exam and one is a certification. Well, I'm interested in the certification, so I'm going to click on that one. So when we, we, we read through the information provided, in Microsoft Learn for this PL100 certification, we can see that to gain the certificate, I need to pass just one exam. Sometimes to gain a certification, you will need to pass more than one exam. But on this occasion, I can just go straight back to the exam. You can see that once you're ready and once you've gone through all of the learning material for a particular exam, you can schedule it via the Microsoft Learn website. And for this, you will need that learning profile and the Microsoft certification ID that comes with it. Before then though, I need to know what I need to study to be able to take the exam and pass it. So the first thing I normally do when I come into Microsoft Learn and I'm looking to pass the certification is I would download the exam skills outline. And the exam skills outline will take you through everything you need to learn to be successful in passing a particular exam and gaining a particular certification. It'll let you know where there are any gaps in your knowledge. As I've mentioned, there are two ways to prepare for this. You can study online free, either by self-study or in a study group, or you can find a learning partner, which is an instructor-led paid route. And to find a learning partner, you can just click through on Microsoft Learn and search for a learning partner in your particular country. As you can see, all the UK ones are listed there. as well as providing a whole heap of learning material, Microsoft do provide useful resources for the exam itself. And I would recommend becoming familiar with these resources, particularly the information on the exam itself. There are a number of different question types that you'll come across in the Microsoft certification exams. And it's 
really quite sensible to make yourself familiar with those before you go into the exam so that you know what to expect. I've included a link to these resources at the end of my slide deck. So as I've mentioned, all of the learning material is grouped into these learning paths and for each certification or for each exam, there'll be a, a number of learning paths and within each learning path, there will be a number of modules, as you can see. And as you go along, you can gain an amount of XP and keep track of where you are. Within the modules, you'll find the individual learning elements that you need to work through to be able to complete that module. And Microsoft do provide quite a handy and easy to follow means of understanding where you've got to on a particular module so that if you do happen to have to go away and come back to something later, you know exactly where you've got to. Microsoft also provide an estimate of how long it might take you to complete a particular piece of learning. I would just point out that it quite often takes me considerably longer than the Microsoft estimate to complete, to complete this learning. That's because I tend to follow along uh, in my own environment and I'm going to come on to how you can set up an environment and follow along a little bit later in the session. All that Microsoft learning material is complemented by a, a huge amount of community contribution, which I've outlined and which I'm now going to discuss in a bit more detail. First off, I'm going to talk a little bit about mentoring and I'd like you first to read the quote there by Oprah Winfrey. My favourite line is at the end. A mentor is someone who allows you to see the higher part of yourself when sometimes it becomes hidden to your own view. Just last year, I was incredibly lucky to participate in the 90 day mentoring challenge. And that totally altered my perspective of what I could achieve. And it gave me the skills, the confidence and the direction I needed to turn my dreams into goals and my goals into reality. And it set me on a course that I will be following for the rest of my life. I would not be speaking here today if I had not participated in that most incredible mentoring opportunity. So you may be asking yourself, how do I find a mentor? Well, you're in luck because there are lots of people who provide mentoring opportunities in our community. On the top left there, you see Wentors. Now I came across Wentors while I was participating in another community group. And as the name suggests, Wentor specialises in providing mentoring opportunities to women in tech, from women in tech, in order to help reduce the gender disparity in our technology industry. The 90 Day Mentoring Challenge is an annual mentoring scheme run by the Microsoft MVP and all round wonderful human being, Mark Smith, and he's shown just there on the top right hand side. The challenge focuses on a number of areas, including communication, how to be a great consultant, how to navigate Microsoft and the business applications community, how to create a personal brand and thinking about which career path is right for you. On the bottom left there, we have the Power Platform Ambassadors. And if you're thinking of a, of a more technical mentoring opportunity, you could consider applying to them. They're a group of Microsoft MVPs and industry experts who provide mentoring opportunities within their specific domain. Or you could try the direct approach by approaching someone you admire in a professional capacity or even an MVP. I've mentioned MVPs a few times now. It stands for Microsoft's Most Valuable Professional and it's, award, it's an award given to the community members who have been recognised by Microsoft for their outstanding contribution to the community and to devote a lot of time and effort to helping others. 
Another incredibly useful study resource available from the community is study groups and I've already mentioned the near legendary groups run by Julian Sharp. The typical format of a study group is that a group leader would take the helm. Normally there'd be a shout out on social media channels to ask anyone who's interested to register and sometimes there will be a limit so you need to get in quickly. The study group leader will then organise the sessions and there may be one or two per week depending on the amount of content that there is to be covered. The study group leader will then typically put together the learning materials and steer each of the sessions. Participants are expected to turn up and to participate and it is expected that there's an amount of study in your own time. As a guide to just how awesome these groups are, I have passed five certifications as a result of attending Julian Sharp's groups and he's also kindly assisted me in learning for other exams. When looking for study group, social media is your very best friend. I would always recommend keeping a watchful eye out for anything that Julian Sharp, a Microsoft MVP, posts and he's shown there on the top left hand side. Not only does Julian run the most incredible study groups, he also frequently signposts to other learning opportunities and blogs around a whole host of valuable learning content. Rory Neary, another MVP, runs the Power Platform Learn Group and that is aimed at taking learners of all abilities from zero to hero in all aspects of the Power Platform. On the bottom left hand side there we can see Victor Dantas, another MVP, who runs the Power Apps Portal Zero to Hero sessions. And the Virtual Power Group, or VPG, which is based in Scotland, runs virtual learning sessions on a regular basis and this is extremely well organised and very friendly. If you can't find a study group that is focusing on something that you want to currently learn, maybe you could make one of your own or find one or more study buddies. To see the community pulling together at its very best, look no further than any of the hundreds or maybe thousands of community events that are held all over the world. Often with numerous tracks covering a multitude of subjects, events, events such as this, the Scottish Summit, are only made possible by the eagerness of community members to help each other learn. As you will have seen, the tracks range from those requiring no previous experience or expertise, such as this, to in-depth technical deep dives. And this means that no matter where you are on your own learning voyage, there's always a chance to pick up some new and interesting information. How do you find your community events? Well, I've got a few shown on this slide here. The one on the top left hand side, Textilers, is a community of ladies founded by Foyana Olegide Bello, who's a Microsoft MVP. And we meet monthly with the aim of encouraging more women to consider technology and particularly Power Platform as a career. The group is widely supported by some of the most prominent ladies in the Power Platform community. On the top right hand side, we have Powerthon, which is the name of a community group that regularly organises Microsoft 365 Saturday and industry events focused on sharing knowledge. These events happen several Saturdays in a month and there's also a huge amount of training resources available in the back catalogue of events on the Powerthon community portal. South Coast Summit is represented by the icon on the bottom left hand side and that's a new event for this year. It's due to take place in October um, hopefully it's going to be in person and it is expected to be the largest M365 and Azure community conference to be held in the UK. Pre-registration is open for that event right now. Details of all of these events and many more can be found on the community powered virtual events hub and that's represented by the icon on the bottom right hand side. And this is a community calendar which can be simply overlaid in Outlook so that you can keep up to date with exactly what's going on. But the very best way to stay informed about what's happening is to regularly check LinkedIn and Twitter using the relevant hashtags 
many of which have been including, included during this presentation. On a slightly smaller scale to community events, we have the D365 and Power Platform user groups, which happen all over the UK and, and in fact all over the world. The user groups are a very welcoming environment for like-minded voyagers to get together, to share knowledge, to meet old friends and to make new ones. The smaller groups tend to meet in the evenings, but some of the larger ones, for example the UK user group, which is based in London, hold full day events. Dynamics and Power Platform user groups are typically organised through the Dynamics Communities website and you can keep up to date with what is happening by registering on there. Alternatively, a quick Google search will often tell you what's going on in your area and it will then be possible to register via Meetup, Eventbrite or the relevant app. The format of a user group is that one or more group members will typically prepare sessions on particular areas of interest and these are then shared with the group, providing plenty of learning opportunities. In-person events are often held at really interesting venues and are usually well supported by MVPs, which provides an excellent opportunity to get to know who they are. And there may even be a bite to eat and a trip to the local pub afterwards. I've added a few of the user groups I've attended, both in person and virtually, on this slide. But it's worth noting that as many of, as many as of the user groups are now virtual, now is a great time to get out there and meet new people from user groups all over the world. There is no better place to see the all hands on deck community spirit come alive than at a hackathon. Hackathons typically take place several times a year and have open invitations for anyone who's interested in creating dynamics or power platform solutions to take part. In a hackathon, Attendees are grouped into teams and the teams are then challenged to create solutions to real world problems over the course of one or two days, depending on the event, which normally takes place over a weekend. Although the name Hackathon implies some familiarity with the dark arts, all sorts of people take part, not just the super techies. Teams are of mixed ability and some of the most important jobs on the team are the non-technical ones, a hackathon can literally be won or lost on the quality of a team's final presentation. Joining a hackathon team is really easy and it's a great way to find out what working in a busy project team might feel like. And it's always for a great cause. Many of the solutions are given away at the end to the not-for-profit sector to develop further. There is a vast amount of content produced by community contributors online. I've just shown a few of my favourites here. There are literally thousands of blogs. Neil Parkhurst, who is shown here at the top of my page, writes my go-to blog for anything D365 related, and I can credit him directly for several of my certifications. I also follow Joe Griffin, Didi Radulova, Megan Walker, who's shown here at the bottom, and a host of others. Very many community creators also post content on YouTube. I find videos really useful and I often follow along. I've shown John Levesque here in the middle, but there are hundreds of others. Reza Durrani, Eliza Benitez, Daniel Christian, Matt Collins-Jones, just to name a few. There are also scores of webcasts and podcasts broadcast regularly. I listen to NZ365 Guy, aka Mark Smith of the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge, and the Up podcast, which is produced by Megan Walker and Lisa Crosby. It's just so entertaining and it's signposts to many excellent resources. To find them all, be sure to use your social media. Get onto Twitter and LinkedIn and see who follows who. See who's posting what and check the hashtags. I've added quite a few onto my slides. Get out there, build your knowledge network. There's a world of great content just waiting for you. So, once you've decided the direction that you're going to take and you've mapped out your course and connected with your learning crew and discovered a wealth of content to help you along the way, now comes the hard part undertaking the study. 
This is going to take considerable effort, commitment and discipline and none of these should be underestimated. So here's a few tips that I've picked up along my own learning journey. Go at your own pace. Remember, if you're using Microsoft Learn, you may not complete the modules in the suggested times. I don't know where Microsoft gets those times, but it takes me exponentially longer to work through the Learn material than suggested. Also, don't look at what other people are doing. It's not a race. You should use a variety of learning materials and methods. At a recent D365 Saturday, Carl Cookson, aka Linked365, who is another Microsoft MVP, gave an awesome presentation on mind maps, flashcards and other materials and I've shared a link to his blog at the end. Take out a trial. Hmm, what is a trial, I hear you ask? Well, a trial is a demo environment that Microsoft very kindly provide for evaluation for learning purposes. And if you're considering a career in business applications, you should definitely become familiar with how to use them, as the key to learning anything is practice. Benjamin Franklin famously said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. Anna Domini, who used to be a Microsoft MVP and who now works for Microsoft, has written an excellent guide on how to take out a trial on her blog and the link is shown just here. Finally, don't be afraid of failure. If you don't understand something the first time, that's fine. Just take a break and go back to it. And if you fail an exam, just take it again. It won't count against you. If you're considering a career in D365 and the Power Platform, your learning, like the changes that spring from the ever-evolving technologies, will be constant. And this variety is what makes working in Dynamics and the Power Platform such fun. So before I end my session, I would like to share something I learned from another D365 and Power Platform consultant who is also my very good friend and frequent study buddy, Larry Merkelis. And that is to make learning a habit, so that it's something that you do almost without effort. And to do this, you need to follow four simple steps. The first is to make sure that there is a cue to learn and that it's obvious. For example, set a reminder for learning time in your calendar. The second is to create an attractive stimulus that makes you really want to learn. So maybe add a picture of your forthcoming certificate onto your PC or into your, into your calendar reminder. The third is make it easy to do the learning, plan it out beforehand so that you know exactly what you're going to do and why. Lastly, give yourself a reward. Maybe create a visual guide to your progress, something like the XP in Microsoft Learn that shows you how well that you're doing. Alternatively, if all of these steps seem a little bit much, well, you could try joining the community crew in regularly participating in community learning, which achieves all four. On the left hand side here, are some links to many of the resources that I've mentioned today. And on the right hand side are my contact details. Please do reach out if there's anything at all that I can help you with. If you've not had opportunity to screen grab those yet, I've been asked to mention that sessions will be uploaded to YouTube after 14 days. So it's just left for me to say Thank you for attending and wherever your own voyage of discovery takes you, happy travels.